So, okay, next up, uh, we have Edmund Rogers from the University of Illinois. Uh, give him a round of applause. <laughs> All right, so I do cybersecurity research at the University of Illinois with a bunch of different people on this project uh, from Illinois and Oregon State and Rutgers and Power World. And here's some pictures of some of the key people on the project. Somehow I got involved with those guys. Now, Kate was supposed to be here with me. This would have been her first hacker convention talk. She's done many uh, IEEE type speak speaking engagements before. She was really excited about being here. Her husband was much more exciting, excited when he crashed his bicycle and he needs his shoulder reconstructed or something. So. Kate sends her regrets, and I'm going to be responsible for her part, too, which is all the power stuff. So it's going to be pretty cool. But the research project that we were on, it was funded by ARPA-E. We're at the end of three years. And uh, at the end, one of the goals that we had was we were going to ensure that our software was going to have impact. And in order to do that, um, I really pushed for open sourcing the engine that we use for cyber physical um, impact analysis. Um, and um, primarily this was developed for use in the power grid. So the idea being how can you ensure operational reliability and uh, understand the impact of you know, the C word or you know, the, the network attack surface around uh, a large system that provides power to many people. And you have more um, cybersecurity things than you have time to take care of. And how can you effectively prioritize those things so your effort can be directed where it would have the greatest impact on reliability of operation? Because the problem is very complicated when you think about, you know, there's internet connectivity coming into the corporate network, and then we've got all these little field devices, and then you got you know, nasty hackers trying to go into substations and, and or they're, oh, we're going to come in through the internet and attack the land. So it's, it's a very large, complex problem when you look at um, how do you put everything together so that um, we can look at adding on to traditional contingency analysis. Because planners and electric operations manually define contingencies like, oh, we're going to lose this substation or we're going to lose this generator. And their um, like ecosystems are big things within the power grid. <clears throat> uh, but we want to try and, and then they automatically insert these things. And they, simu they simulate the impact of what would happen if you lost that substation or that generator or something big. But <clears throat> It was always meant to be this like N minus one criteria where we lose one substation, what's going to happen? And then traditional contingency analysis has always been that way where we're going we're gonna to plan everything based around that one thing. But, the, but what happens when you add this uh, cyber on top where maybe it would be very, you could simultaneously bring down or provide um, a denial of service condition to multiple locations and how would you plan for that um, short of yeah we can make a big giant blackout but then there's like a middle ground between that like if I get a, five things happen at once what is the contingency for that and previously we couldn't do any um, computation with that but newer more modern hardware has giving up, given us the capability of providing for much more fine-grained information about impact. And that's what the research project was all about. And because of the advent of more modern communications in things like the power grid, you have this idea about the size of the contingency list can just grow very large. If you look at a thousand, a thousand lines and doing an N minus one means you have a thousand different criteria. But you go down to N minus two and just take two things out, then you're, you're just getting really big. And so what do you do? Because uh, when you look at game theory, and there's a lot of game theory people on our research project, um, they wanted to compute everything. And it got really, really large fast. And we're like, 
what we want to do is come up with a way to reduce the, where we're going to be calculating. And we, we do that, and I'm going to get to it in a little bit about, which is my part, about we add network attack surface to reduce the space of computation so that we can come up with a ranked list of contingencies. So if you look at like things like the, this is the beginning of the 2003 blackout. Um, what the tool can do is take all of the different physical components that are inside of a substation and then we map them, um, map, map the cyber and the network attached surface around it and we can provide a mapping. So this is like normal and um, so when something happens there's a little bit of a disturbance and then depending on what the piece of equipment is, how long it takes to clear the fault determines whether or not the thing would cascade beyond it, the bound of whatever it might be. And then if something bad happens, we all know that this was probably bad. So um, modern computing has allowed us, instead of just looking, oh, we lose this substation, something bad happens, you can actually go into uh, an industrial facility after doing some of this inventory work. And I, would, I always like it to, I want to go into a substation and point at something and go, I want to know, you know, does this thing have an IP address? How is it connected on a network? What would be the impact if this thing were to be misused? And um, so the project tries to answer that question. And um, this is kind of like a preview of what's, what you're getting ready to see. This is what the front end looks like and what you're able to download now. It was released four hours ago. Um, but Sipes of Streamlines the utility's ability to inventory and analyze cyber physical assets. So it brings out, um, first we have, to, we have to do work to collect the data from the individual devices that make the power grid. And then provide a mapping between the physical device and then its manifestation in the planning model. And then, and it's, if it exists, its IP addresses and uh, network attack surface. And as we did the research, we came up with use cases. And like the first one I kind of touched on a little bit was asset ranking. So the idea is like, I've got a fairly large or a medium size, whatever you want to call it. I have a bunch of substations. I have 10,000, 100,000 assets. Do you know which ones are the top 50 individual computing devices that are in your network? Likely not, because planning has always been, I always viewed it as being from the top down. So we're going to look at this substation, and we like to think we do cyber physical from the bottom up. So we look at all the individual components in the, in the power grid, and then rank those assets. And they can actually be ranked in, uh, within like uh, the threshold for um, voltage, uh, stability, which is like 15 minutes, because a uh, utility will calculate how they're doing every 15 minutes typically. So the control panel kind of looks like this. I'll do a demo later. I'm not going to hold on this too long unless the demo screws up, but you can get a length list of what your top assets are. And then we calculate a cyber cost based on network availability and vulnerability scores from the ICS CERT database. So we can ingest and in map data to come up with this score. And then there's also a performance index, which is related to what does the, what does, what's the impact of the equipment in the, on the power side. And then some of the other use cases that came along as we were doing this at utilities, because we actually have deployed this software at certain utilities, is this idea about patching. So you need to patch a lot of things. And I want to know, if I only have a limited amount of time to patch things, which things would get the best benefit out of being patched first. So if you're able to provide a ranked list of all your assets, you, you know which of the assets you should patch first. And there's actually a little box in the tool that says, I just patched this asset. Then the tool will recalculate the list of um, top assets based on the fact that you've patched certain assets and you can also keep track of which ones are patched and not patched. So hopefully that'll work in the demo. Not there's a screenshot of course. 
So the idea is we have a network attack surface over here, and we can, we can map the attacker. And I don't know if I can use the mouse for the people online, but on the left over here, we have the attack path. And this is like a standard network attack surface kind of graph. But we also can grab, graph that into a physical one-line diagram. So if the electrical engineer is here, she'd be able to tell you a lot more. But I know, even as a cybersecurity guy, 126% is bad. <clears throat> so the guy gets in on that device, that line goes to 126%. And in the animation that, that we actually can run, and I'm probably not going to do it today, it causes a little blackout. So um, the other thing that's really cool if you think about it is aggregate exposure. So how many, you know, Willie's 385s do I have in all my stuff? Because if there's a vulnerability and a certain revision level or model has a vulnerability, what happens if they all go out at the same time? We can actually model that now. So um, there is a way to just uh, select or show how many of each different thing you have and what the impact would be if those things were to go down. And then um, this then leads into another case we got from actually utility feedback because they wanted to be able to do cyber incident planning where they wanted to be able to come up with more realistic cases of a cyber incident and then what could they do to plan to make for a more reliable system. So the idea would be uh, in the blackout, you know, there were, there were certain, this is the actual 2003 blackout in a power flow diagram. And then if you had a way to map all the individual components, um, you could show the, where the most important things were and then the impact of that uh, event like we, sh we showed before. And this piece probably would have been a lot better if Kate was here. Um, but this is the transient stability problem where within five milliseconds, if the fault doesn't clear, there's a problem. So we want to take all the individual components and determine which ones have this five millisecond threshold exceeded, <clears throat> which would mean that it would impact devices around it and that could perhaps get larger. And then, and again, of course, another. This is what you're going to get in a download and we'll see if the... Uh, demo actually works later. But, so the aggregate exposure, like I said before, so if I wanted to come in and there were three different um, things in common, so I can have a multiple pathways coming in, and we can then simulate that and know. Now, again, not even being an electrical engineer, 114 and 142% bad. So, and then this is uh, just a power world flow diagram. And the blue line on the left side the blue dotted line? An attacker. Okay. It's a threat model. It's an attacker. I don't like the word attack, but the academics I work, I work with love the word attack. So I really try to remove the word attack as much as possible. Hmm? How would you call it instead? What would I call it instead? Yeah. A day that ends in Y. <laughs> So the, the question was, how, how would I, how would I uh, call the, instead of the word attack, what would I use? I would say it's just a day that ends in Y. So if things happen, and if there's a, a multiple, if you have something in common amongst things, there's not really a, until now, there wasn't really a way to effectively model this. And so one of the things that we've been really working on is, how do you visualize these things? Because there's a lot of junk in, in this, and it's a very hard problem just in visualization. So actually, the first thing is, if you go to this IP address, this is actually live right now, you can see what we did was we took the IEEE 8 bus model and then modeled all of the protective relays and everything, the distance relays. And you can see a cyber physical representation of the IEEE 8 bus model. It's actually online. This is using uh, Gabe Weaver's CPTL. Um, and then uh, we did a talk, I did a talk with him about this a couple of years ago. CPTL is Cyber Physical Topology Language. And it's in the plumbing of the engine 
So it provides us with ontology so that we can describe the relationship both from a cyber perspective and a physical perspective of individual devices that make up this system. And that kind of like all works together with, with uh, you have, you can use your network software of your choice because there's a, there's a JSON format and I'll get into this in a little while and then we have planning software and the engine is what's been open source today. You can put your own impacts and network attack service and make your own ranked lists. And um, with the whole idea, the goal of the project to be grid reliability. And uh, it's been, I released it, uh, I think it was 11 o'clock this morning, after we got the license attached to the software, which I noticed wasn't, there was no license. I'm like on the phone, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, maybe we should put a license on this. So it's open source under the NCSA UIUC licensed license. And um, what we did was we worked to remove the dependency of any particular piece of commercial software. So um, I have a slide about that later. The idea is, and I think I've already kind of talked about this a little bit, the physical connections and the impact together are so like I've got in the top here, the host may be compromised or line K, then line K is at risk. And then this is all manifested back into what is the protection scheme at the substation and then which individual device is at risk and then what would the impact be if that device were compromised. And then with this critical clearing time, we can determine whether or not it's going to be an issue because the planner will tell you if it clears within five milliseconds, I don't care about it. So now, let's see what happens. And if I remember to turn the porn off on my, because I was, you know, I was waiting in the speaker room. So this is that IP address thing that I showed, and I will provide the slide so that you know what the IP address was, but it's 72 dot, whatever that is. Um, it's up, and um, this is actually, hopefully online. So this is actually out on the internet somewhere. So you can see that the visual representations of the eight bus model, you can go online and look at those. Um, by going to that IP address, you can get me afterwards. And then the other thing is the actual tool, which is right here. So when you download Sipsa or Armadillo, which is what it's called, the release is called Armadillo, you're gonna get a HTML5 front end, you need Tornado and Python to run it on your, on your machine. And um, I could go through and start it, but I actually went ahead and loaded it. I could show you later. We'll see how I'm doing on time. I'm, I think I'm talking really fast right now, so. <clears throat> um, I don't want to attempt starting it right now because it's all running and it might screw itself up because it does open up a port inside your computer because we connect to like 5555. So when I click on Sipes Analysis, so if you have multiple projects, you can select those uh, and there's a folder structure for that. And um, so I can go in there and select that. And then the little um, visualization will appear and I can view the cyber assets, and then we can also view the physical assets. We get the one-line diagrams, and then um, if I start this, it kind of looks like this. So now, here we have a, a rank list of assets in the 8-bus model. So if I click on different IP addresses, I'll get the corresponding pass, if it's still working. Um, it was working because the paths were up there, or I can view the physical, that's still working, and then the, the cyber connectivity in that specific location. There's also a couple of other features in the tool that's been released today, and that's, um, let me go back here. There we go. So there's also the other visualization. So we use D3 for visualization and um, that's coming up, but this is the, um, this is gonna look really, really small on this video. So this is the eight bus model, but if I click on individual substations, I can then get 
we have a tree view on the left, and then we can show the, both the physical, the big from a planning perspective or one line diagram perspective assets, and then, or click on individual things and the network would come up, or the network elements or the cyber security, the cyber elements, the network attack surface of individual substations. And then there's also, um, this is another tree view of the same CPTL based um, things. Once we get the mapping of this relay is this IP address, it serves this function, we can tie all those things together via ontologies and then look at all of the different components that make up the different substations. So I can select any substation at random, um, or if you can see that, somebody can pick from the audience and I can show, oh, not if I do that. There we go. Let's see. So how about you pick one and we'll see if it actually works still. Somebody. How about Haverbrook? Okay, there you go. So this is a Haverbrook substation, and then I can look at um, the different cyber and physical components that are in that um, substation. It looks better on a, if you have a bigger screen, obviously. And then, um, get back here. And then, it kind of can get big, and here's where we hit the D3 wall. So we actually have a model that has 300 substations in it, and it's about 5,000 devices. So this is 5,000 devices, and D3 kind of like starts to shit on itself. So like if you wanted to zoom in, it takes like 30 seconds. So I could get all the way into here, but I don't have that much time. Even as fast as I'm talking right now, I don't have that much time. But, uh, so it's, it's kind of there, but going back and some of the other trees that we used in the visualization really helped us put more information visually on the screen because um, one of the things we learned in the research going into utilities is that it seemed like we were more interested in the visualization than the utility actually is because all they really wanted was either a CSV file or a list. We want the list. We want to see a table. And that's really where they always go back to the the, you know, the home interface where we just go into, this is not the right one. We go into here and they want a nice table so they can see their top assets. Now this should be working. There we go. They want to see their list of assets and I think if I come down here, and with the video, kind of like, I think maybe see that now. I can mark, two, two things I can do with the engine that are kind of cool is that you can mark a host as being patched so that you know which ones haven't been patched yet. So a utility asked us for this, but the other thing I thought was really cool is I could actually mark a host as being compromised and then recalculate the rank path based on that. And then you can also go through and see the vulnerabilities based on CVE score for each of the individual components uh, that have IP addresses. And we tie all that together. And then we can also patch the, mark the vulnerabilities as being patched and then recalculate the, um, the pass. And then, did I forget anything? I'll find out when I go back to the slides. Um, I think there was one more. Uh, and yes, there's one more. So this is actually D3. So this is the eight substation model. And one of the things, it's like, okay, that looks like uh, some kind of blended salad. So what are you going to do when you have all of these different devices? And one of the things that we're working on and we, we built the trees is that I could show you all the different devices, but then how does this make sense? You add names, do you not put names in? These are all traditional visualization problems, which is why we have a blend between you want a visualization, you have a smaller network that's going to be fine, especially from an open source perspective because maybe you don't have 5,000 devices. Uh, one of the things the B-Sides folks asked us to do is to come up with a way for, I'm not a power guy, how can I use this? So the visualizations are, are very mature and stable. We've had, we had 
professional programmers working on some of this, some of the visualizations, and then you can always go back to the tables because uh, you can get a lot of uh, from just tables because people understand either the name of the of the device or its IP address. Cyber guys are always going to look at cybersecurity people, look at the IP address, and know what you're talking about, and then like. Operators always ask for the name, or they look to see the name, and you can change these kind of things once you have everything into a database. So I'm going to go and see if I forgot anything here. I'll need to pick the right slides. Okay. So here's how you start the tool. So let me see. Not bad. Um, so when you go to GitHub and download Armadillo, you're going to need to be running Tornado. It's uh, some guy shaking his head, yeah, yeah. So then all you're going to do is, and it's not start Tornado. It's, I think it's not, it doesn't say that. It's something else now. So that, that's, that's wrong. It says start Sipsa. It doesn't say start Tornado anymore. But then it comes up just like I showed you in the demo. You click on Sipes Analysis. Maybe I should have looked at these slides before I tried to demo, because I probably would have done better. Um, click Select. And then 8Bus Analysis comes up. A bunch of stuff starts to go in the background. And this is the engine doing its thing. And then you can go in and look at your ranked list of um, contingencies. And then here's the, the list of assets. And then we have this. Like I said, the security index is determined by the cyber cost and the performance index. And um, you want to contact any of us who have contact information. There's been papers written on some of the formulas behind the performance index and the cyber cost. And there's more papers being published towards the end of the year uh, regarding this research. And um, did that, showed you that. There's the tree view. Maybe it looks a little bit better in the slide where you can select out on a different yard and it shows the connection between the distance relays. This is our attempt at really better organizing than we can get out of D3 because it's so jumbled when you put a few hundred devices on a small screen. But um, it's more than just power. The Sipsa engine and the web front end there can be used on uh, things other than the power grid. And like I said before, there is a uh, Performance index, JSON template, so you can make your own performance index for individual devices and then build your own network attack surface via the, the JSON provided in the open source and use the engine in uh, something that's called uh, offline mode. And then you're like, well, well, how do I do that? Shit. So, well, um, the this is like literally something that was done last week because I was very insistent about having a standalone product that would run without any proprietary information from commercial products. So Olivier calls it offline mode. So you actually have to type offline in the command line. He wrote these up. Um, we had uh, Olivier was uh, he was uh, we had him on loan from a marine institute in France. He's a Frenchman and. Uh, he calls it offline mode. So now it's offline mode right now. I don't know if it's going to stay that way, but it's actually in the command line. So you would do run types of bat, eight bus, boop, boop, offline. Or, and you can also change the output in cpgen.csv so that you can pull your own information in. And uh, Olivier is not in America anymore. He left last week. And, uh, but I, I thought that. I would want him to be in the talk. So that's Olivia. He really indoctrinated himself into America while he was here. And he was amazed at the size of the, uh, of the soft drinks. So Sipsa is available on GitHub uh, as of 11 this morning. There is the papers involved with some of the formalization path analysis that we did at the Illinois website under ITI Sipsa, and then uh, Cadego is a company that has been formed to uh, work on servicing the open source, kind of like with Snort or something like that, where 
you want uh, somebody to come in and do this. And part of the ARPA-E project was um, path to commercialization. They wanted they want to see the research have impact. So um, Cadego can kind of help with that. And then um, Kate would have been happy to be here to talk to you about it. This is, going to, this is her company. Um, and um, my role at the university is to help researchers have, see their research have impact and to uh, perhaps have them start companies. And this is the second one I've done at the University of Illinois. So I think that's it. And I have plenty of time for questions. Yeah, if people have questions, could you just come up uh, to my phone? How's it going, Ed? Chris is strong. Hey, Chris. Uh, Mandiant. Um, so your model, I'm an electrical engineer. I don't know if you I know. OK, so I, be gentle. I'm, I, I'm a hacker. I'm not an electrical right. engineer. So I used to work for Entergy. And um, so I actually know Matt Davis. That's uh, Kate's husband. We went to school. Yeah, he's, he's OK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's not. He's not He's very happy right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we went to school together at Tech. Well, anyway, my question is, is I, I know it focuses a lot on the relays and things like that. Does this project also include things like RTU, substation RTUs? As a matter of fact, it does. But the idea is, you know, we can map impact of anything inside the substation because with the ontologies that way, the, the sexy things are the relays and sure. because they have the greatest uh, precision. I need to be, I need to understand what's going to happen five milliseconds, within five milliseconds after something right. happens in a relay. RTU goes out, oh no, we don't have readings from this site, the grid's not going to go down. There's different, different performance index, but it can be included, but if you have 10,000 things, they're going to be yeah. towards the bottom of the list. Yeah, we had to do risk ratings for every type of piece of equipment. For relays, I had to do them for RTUs, Yeah. and I wanted to include cyber at the time, but we didn't have very many RTUs on the network. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if you have a, an older substation with a lot of electromechanical relays, but you have a modern uh, substation gateway or RTU with IP, that would be really good to Yeah, when, take and the a, other thing is, yeah is the idea behind, we, we see this a lot out in the field too, because we've been to a lot of utilities, yeah. is that we can model um, serial, or like non-rotable protocols, yeah. because it's just a relational map to us. A can get to B to get to C, and it's much easier to model than when we're looking at a larger utility that has maybe multiple pathways. And you can still map impact on that, but you lose like, so I won't have an end map, there's no IP address, so. You, you're, you have to adjust your cyber score because it's different. Because like your cyber score is probably the one then. Because if I can get access to that, I own it. Right. Exactly. All right. Thanks. Good question. Ed, would you be so kind to share with us, uh, if you could, the future direct? Like, you know, I guess what's next? I mean, I see that a company has been founded. I know that at Illinois, there's going to be a lot. You know, you're expecting a lot more paper to get out. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot more publication. But, you know. Um, is this going to be used? I mean, is it going to be? Is this going to be shopped around to utilities and power uh, industrial uh, companies? I, I mean, could you share a little bit more about how you're going to, uh, what the approach is? Sure, I can do that. So, I didn't want this to be a vendor pitch. Yeah. So, you know, we are out in WEC. We've been at WEC User World meeting. We're, we're working closely with planners. Um, we're with a big utility out in WEC. We've actually modeled the Northwest with this. And um, we can do transient stability studies and critical clearing times for some of WEC. I don't want to misspeak because I think this is live, but for mm. some of WEC. But it's possible to do all of WEC. We just would need to model it. And um, so we're actively involved in that kind of thing on the Cadego side of the fence. But this is not a Cadego talk. This is a talk about the engine. We use this engine. And, um, and we want other people to use it too because some of the continued research that's going to be happening is in cyber because we can formally describe what's going to happen in physical impact. Cyber is a little behind. We're about maybe a year to two years behind in cyber. We can't formally describe cyber the way we can physical. You know, you know this. And there's continued research on this with some of the folks that I flashed their pictures up earlier. I didn't look at this as a, as a sales pitch by any, no way would I 
No, 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 but I'm, I'm trying to be very careful about that. I, I think there's something that you do bring up that's pretty valuable in that you're also demonstrating the, uh, the entrepreneurial uh, aspect of it. You don't really have a lot of time. Right, because when, when we were talking about what we were going to do with the software, and there was like, you know, I have to be very careful about what I say now because it is, this is being recorded. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we wanted it to be open source because we wanted to get it out there. And it, makes it, it makes a commercial pathway easier because anybody else can go out and jump and grab this software now, but we have a three-year head start on you, and we know how to do this, and we've broken this thing a thousand times before. The web front end is very stable. You build your own impact models. You can do this stuff now. And what we're really, this is also a call for volunteers. This is a new open source project. Let's, let's make this for the community. The engine is very nice. Uh, and um, I'd like to see people get involved. And so if I can ask a question about how you're cascading um, impact through the graph. Um, first, are you maintain two graphs, one for you know, reachability you know, if you compromise this, you compromise this, and one for something like flowing, you know, increases in power as you remove or add um, Yeah, that's like, assets, um, or is it a single uh, graph structure? No, it's multiple graphs. So you have the graph for the power, which is pr very mm -hmm. formalized in many different commercial applications, yeah. planning software, whichever one you use, and we built an interface so that if you don't use PowerWorld, you use something else, yeah. you can write to the XML. And we can take in that impact data. And then on the other side, like for network, you need to just tell us, we need to see firewall rules or in the mm -hmm. format that the CSV sits in so you can push the two things together. And I've completely forgotten your question at this point. <laughs> so, oh, the graphs, the graphs. So, yeah, um, so yeah um, the, it's more than just graphs. But the online mode, for example, what we do is we can recalculate what this Scores based on both the, pow the power grid's always changing. What's important on the power grid's going to change depending on what time of day it is. Yeah. Because load moves all around. And then your corresponding, where's the hot spot is going to move on the cyber side too because these are the things that are more important. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I answered okay. the question. No, it explains how you're um, <clears throat> flowing the cascading failures through to get impact by yeah, you know, there's a socket power is you know, exceeded threshold. If, if you had Power World, there's a socket that's yeah. open in the engine. It talks directly with Power World. Yeah. And then when there's changes, Power World does uh, transient stability um, analysis. And it also does a critical clearing time on the individual devices. And this is something that we literally just finished two weeks ago. So we can, we can provide a clear, critical clearing time in Power World for individual relays. Now, are the attack paths through the, um, are, are you modeling attack paths on the attacker side? Um, is it, you know, they got into this and with this they can get into this, or are you more modeling just um, if they, you know, we know that this is connected to something an attacker could potentially touch and therefore if it goes down we see this. And are you modeling um, failure modes other than just availability? Yes. So. Okay. It's a combination. We look at the firewall configuration, so we get a reduced set of mm -hmm. network attack surface from that availability. And then through Nmap, we can, if you have Nmap data, and we've done actual Nmap scanning, and we've artificially produced Nmap scanning to interrogate the US CERT database. So that these are the vulnerabilities that might be on this mm -hmm. system. So if there is a vulnerability that matches the software that's in the system, it's going to percolate up on the list. And this is also something that can be calculated over a period of time or iterative, iteratively. Is that mm -hmm. iteratively? Yes. And so, and then when you're determining, when you're prioritizing assets by likelihood and impact, um, are you just kind of using some kind of five by five matrix for impact versus likelihood. How are you weighing those two together to get your single, this is the most important? Um, how do you combine those two orthogonal vectors in the tool? There's a paper you can read. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 the answer is longer than I can sure. get to um, right now. But there's, and it, it's also a research topic. You know, yeah. we make some decisions about what formulas we use to come up with these indexes. We test them against the utilities that we're going out with in the real world, and we're getting close. 
And one of the things that I'm really, I'm really happy to release the software out to the general public is we want to know how close we are and how we're, how we're calculating both performance index on the network side and then the impact and then blending them together because we started out first using game theory and that was very MP, pro very MP yeah. problematic and then we went to depth first search and you know, we've got a lot of PhDs on this project. Lots of papers were written about this and it, but it all came down to practically how do you reduce the attack surface so that it's big enough to calculate but then it's still interesting. Because yeah. I can reduce the attack surface down to zero then we can calculate everything, it's easy. <laughs> so you gotta find, uh, there's a middle ground in there somewhere and then the more people that use this, we can find how far can we take today's electronics. Because mm -hmm. I think we can get much further now than we could 20 years ago, but no work has really been done on modernizing this kind of planning. Okay, thank you. That's a good question, thank you. So, anybody else? So, Thanks, I think that maybe the electrical engineering part would have been a little longer if Kate had actually come. And um, appreciate everybody's attention and just go out and get the software and tell us what we did wrong. Thank you.